Welcome to Ideas, a time of conversation about all things board games. Community is built on conversations and games are built on ideas. Hey, my name is Brent here on Cloudy with the Chance Meeples, and today we have another episode of Ideas. Brand new month, brand new set of ideas. If you're new to the channel, Ideas is just a time, a place to talk about ideas in board gaming and build community because community is built on conversation just like games are built on ideas every month. We chat with another designer or professional in the board gaming hobby. And today we have none other than James A, right? James A. Wilson or just James Wilson? They all work. <laughs> they all work. So we have James Wilson, um, designer of my favorite game, which is Everdell, right there. And so James, thanks so much for taking the time to chat about Everdell and life in general. You bet, man. I'm honored. Thank you. And I will say this. This is the first video that I'm not wearing a hat. Every video on the channel, I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> and, you know, we're getting closer to Christmas. And so I'm pulling out my Christmas sweaters. This is from uh, a band called Wolves at the Gate. And they're a metal band and they do Christmas stuff. So I figured none of my hats really mesh with Christmas sweaters and stuff. So I figured... <laughs> And I'm often covering up my hair because my wife says I'm balding, but whatever. That's yeah. Well, me too. You know, <laughs> it's part. It's part of life. <laughs> it is. It is. So speaking of life, um, board gaming is part of your life, pretty big, I would think. Um, over the last number of years, what got you into the hobby board gaming? Or the the, the yeah. There we go. So I had a friend that told me about this game called Catan that he was playing with his wife. And he said, uh, it's three players, but you can play it with two players if you want to. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Sure, a board game. And so I started Googling it. And then uh, this other game called Carcassonne popped up. And mm -hmm. it said it was two players and up. And so I just got it. No clue about what this thing was at all. And I bought the giant box, you know, because hmm. it was on sale on Amazon or whatever back in the day. Right. I actually still have it have it up there. Uh, but my wife and I sat down and played it, and we were just like, wow. I had no clue that board games could be like this. Because uh, I, I enjoyed computer games and video games and stuff, you know. Um, but I never really, like, played a board game that kind of simulated some of those same feelings for me. Because before that, it was all the standard stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that night, like we went to bed and just like dreamed of roads and like cities, like Carcassonne tiles, like all night long, just playing over in our head. And, and we were just hooked. Uh, it engaged our mind and we couldn't get enough. And so then it was dice tower stuff. And uh, from Tom Vassell learning about all the things, this was like when Dominion was coming out mm -hmm. and um, seven wonders and kind of that stuff was all sort of the new thing. And it, it wasn't, it was big, but not as big as it is for us now. So you could kind of keep up with the hot new titles a little bit more. And we just went down that path that a lot of folks do. And Agricola and Race for the Galaxy and all those kind of games that are more considered classics now at this point. Mm -hmm. And it just sucked us in and um, we're still here. We love it. Nice. So what would your collection be? How many games do you guys have? I think we probably have around 200 or so. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't typically keep games if I don't play them. Mm -hmm. So games come in and if we don't play them, we kind of move them on to something else. You know, there's only so much space. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> I know yeah, all about probably that. Somewhere in that range. Yeah. yeah. So what would you what, what are you guys playing now? Like what's uh, what games are hitting the table often for you guys? Uh, we're always working on some new prototype stuff for all kinds of things all the time. Uh, but we've been enjoying, I'm going to look at my shelf. We've been enjoying like Calico and some of that stuff that um, Flat Out Games is doing. Mm -hmm. Kind of those little thinky, puzzly games are really cool. Uh, we just played a game called Dog Park that was kind mm -hmm. of fun. Yep. Um, Meadow. Meadow is one that we've been enjoying. We got Caverna to the table the other day, and that was fun. And uh, Arnak, yeah, nice. I've been I've been meaning to get uh, Arnak for 
a while now. I've heard it's just amazing. It's deck building and worker placement. And worker placement's my favorite game mechanic. Do you have a favorite game mechanic? It's probably worker placement as well. I mean, obviously that's what I explored with Everdell. Um, I, do, I like drafting. Mm -hmm. I kind of like some set collection types of things. I don't, I don't know. I, I love just exploring just all kinds of mechanics. Uh, mm -hmm. See what's out there. We also played Endless Winter recently, which is also a deck builder mm -hmm. uh, worker placement game, a much bigger, heavier game than Arnak. And that one has a lot of really cool stuff going on in that one too. So do you play just you and your wife or do you have a game group or do you play with kids? Yes, all of all of the above. I mean, okay. mostly it's it mostly it's my wife and I when we play. Uh, we do have friends that come over often, and we'll play with them too, and we play different games with our kids, and so just kind of a a wild mix. But usually, it's just my wife and I that play. Okay, very cool. Do you have a favorite game? Man, I. <laughs> I mean, I you know I think about that often, and. It's dumb to say Everdell, but it 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 might be because I designed the game that I wanted to exist. But outside of Everdell, uh, I still love Carcassonne. I think it's such a clean, brilliant design. Um, I do like Agricola, which was one of the inspirations. It just every time I open that up to play it, I feel like there's a new experience with all the cards, and it's so thematic and mm -hmm. so tight and challenging and rewarding. But it just varies just all the time as we try new things or different things. And I usually find that the game that I like or that I might say is my favorite at the time is the one that we've played a bunch. That's right. how I enjoy games mostly is to play them like often and just sort of get underneath the hood and understand what's going on and learn how to get really good at the game. So it's, it's kind of hard for me to know if I play a game once or twice where it's going to stick. But I really love just diving in and playing a ton. So. That's, that's a bad answer, but probably Carcassonne. No, it's. I don't think there's any bad answer in that. I think that's the the great thing about this hobby is there's like so many, like hundreds and thousands and thousands of games. So there totally. kind of is like something for everybody. And so totally. some games that, you know, are highly critically acclaimed, other people don't like them. And then there's games that, you know, maybe really low on BGG. That's someone's favorite game. And that's just the great thing about board gaming that it's just, it's so vast, right? It is. That's so true. Like we just played recently, uh, one of the Kinderspiel, a recent Kinderspiel winner. And uh, we played it and we we're like, I don't get it. Uh, mm. Like we just didn't enjoy it like at all. We we tried to think, what are we missing? What is it? Maybe we tried again, but it, it wasn't for us, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. And because there are, like you said, a, a thousand other ones to try. And, and it is neat that there's so many different themes now and kind of experiences and mechanics that you, there is a game that you will enjoy out there right. for sure. Yeah. So let's move into your, uh, your game or your favorite game or my favorite game. Um, Everdell. So, <laughs> Um, let, let's go back to the beginning of Everdell. Um, when, when did you start designing Everdell? I think it was close to 10 years ago. Um, I didn't know that it was Everdell, though, at that point. We were playing things like Grace for the Galaxy and Agricola and Stone Age and Seven Wonders. Again, and the classics, now they're classics. At the time, they, not, they weren't quite as much classics. They were a little bit more new. Mm -hmm. But we were playing those a bunch, and we had an idea one evening after playing Agricola, and we played Race for the Galaxy a ton then as well, to take kind of our favorite pieces out of both of those and just push them together, which was tableau building and sort of this worker placement kind of making your area type of thing from, from Agri Agricola. And that was just the thing that started it. What if we had a game that did that? There's a lot of games now that do that, but at the time, we it didn't really exist at least not that we knew about mm -hmm. or it wasn't very popular if it did so that's where we started and i went to my computer the next day and i made this card called the farm i told this story that people before i made this card called the farm and it cost two wood and one clay and it gave you a food and i had no clue <laughs> about anything else in the game or anything whatsoever and I thought, cool, I've made a card and it gives me food. <laughs> and like, that's all I knew. And then I just started spiraling out of that. Well, maybe there could be like people that could live on this farm and maybe you build a town and maybe there's an inn. And I just, I had no clue what I was doing. 
I kind of built, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 cards and sort of came up with this way that you could get some resources. Mm -hmm. And then I printed this thing out. I, I didn't even have a color printer at the time, just black and white. Printed mm -hmm. this thing out and cut it by hand because I also did not own a paper cutter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I I was on the kitchen on the kitchen counter right before dinner. And I was like, I'm just going to see if anything happens. And I still remember taking a little meeple that I stole from Carcassonne, putting it on a little tile, getting some wood or whatever, whatever it was. And I played this card down and this card did something for me. And I went, this is cool. Like it works. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, there could be a game here. And the crazy thing is if you strip away all of the, the world of Everdell, all the other stuff going on, the five span expansions, how huge this thing is. And you just really get down to what is Everdell, put a worker, get some stuff, buy a card and the card does something mm -hmm. like that's kind of it mm -hmm. and that was the core that started it and i had no clue that it could explode many years later which is a long story to get through all that into what it is now but it still goes back to that same basic concept of where it all started and weird thing is i didn't think that it that i would publish it i wasn't even going to try to we just sort of made this little card game and my wife and i played it for probably almost a year before we even showed it to anybody. And then we showed it to a friend and the friend said, I really like this. I'd like to play this more than other games that you guys have on your shelf. And so at that point we started thinking maybe someday it would get published. But at first it was just for us. Very cool. You answered like two of my questions all in one. That's amazing. Sorry, man. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. I, I, I want to hear it. I'm like, I'm a big music guy. So I love all the ins and outs of like how, um, you know, artists like record and this and that, and then work with other artists. And like, I just love the ins and outs. And that's one of the things that I love about this whole idea is just finding about finding out how things come from here and end up here and here and here and here, you know, like how that just snowballs and just grows into something much greater than what it started with. Um, how many times have you, and you, you may not know this, but how many times have you played Everdell, whether that's prototyping or now on the table? Do you have any sort of oh, idea, guess, number? It's over a, th it's over a thousand. Over a thousand. Yeah. I don't not, know. I don't know an accurate number. No, well, and that's fine. Just a ballpark. Yeah. I'm, I'm just over 200. Yeah, um, that's impressive. <laughs> we got a, it in 2020. <laughs> I still I still remember we got it in 2020. And to be honest, I actually backed the Spire Crest and um Belfair expansion. That that was the first thing I bought actually of Everdale. So I backed that on that campaign, having never played the game, having never like I didn't own it. Like I backed that and said, I'm getting money for Christmas. I will buy Everdell so that when these two expansions come, I will have a game to use them with. <laughs> and, wow. And I still remember showing my wife the whole big critter and sliding the meat on. <laughs> like that, I kid you not, that is what sold me on the whole game. Yeah. It's, and so we got in 2020. And then of course, 2020 was a crazy, crazy time. And we played that. I played it a hundred times in 2020 alone. Wow. And so that's and just incredible for me to hear something like that, you know, because I, that's the type of thing I dreamed that when we started seriously moving toward trying to get Everdell published and mm -hmm. started working with some publishers and stuff, uh, that was the dream is like, what if we could make a game where somebody would eventually say something like that? Like, I love this game. I played it whatever amount of times because we we've had played Agricola. That was our favorite game. And I, we kept count until we got to like 40 or 50 and then we just kind of stopped counting. But we loved that game. Like it meant mm -hmm. so much to us. We would have conversations about it and jokes about it and, and this sort of stuff outside of playing the game. It was it was it was that we were a fan. It was more than just a, a game. Yeah. And so to to get Everdell to that point for folks like you and other people, I mean all around the world at this point is uh, it's mind blowing, especially mm -hmm. when you consider, I just threw together a card on my computer. I was not going to try to get this thing published from the beginning. It wasn't going to be that. And for it to be this now is, is humbling and a blessing and just, it, it's incredible. So I'm glad that you enjoy it. That's really cool. I love it. I'm still, I, 
I'm sadly still waiting for my complete collection. Well, I, I Sorry, got the, I, <laughs> that's fine. I got the big old box. So I'll, I'll be playing that just so much when it comes. I'm so, I'm so, so looking forward to it. Um, by the time this is actually up, I'm hoping in a few weeks, I will have this um, in my, in my possession. So moving cool. back to design, at what point did you name it Everdell or did you um, come up with a theme like tiny woodland critters? Like at what point did you a do that? And what was the whole inspiration behind the theme? So in the beginning, it was just uh, a gen generic medieval type of city that you were building. Um, and so there was just an inn and, you know, farms and this stuff. And it kind of stayed that for a couple of years, probably. Mm -hmm. And then at some point we transitioned it to kind of a generic fantasy setting. So there was some fantasy type of characters in the world, but nothing that was just truly like unique, like Everdell is when Starling games um, agreed to publish it. One of the first conversations that we had, this was with the main developer that was there at the time, Dan May, that I work with a lot on Everdell stuff and world building. He said, what do you think about doing a woodland critter type of, thing and like mm -hmm. that was that was the depth of the question that was as far as it really was and i said that would be amazing i would love that idea uh, i like things like red wall he mentioned and then he mentioned red wall and uh, mouse guard and we may have had another kind of inspiration at the time i don't recall there's a mm -hmm. lot of critter games out there nowadays but mm -hmm. uh, mice and mystics i think was also out at that time right. and so we kind of pointed to that and but then we were also inspired by uh, like the Shire from Lord of the Rings because I'm a Lord of the Rings fan and mm -hmm. just sort of that feeling of that sort of idyllic place that has sort of that medieval flair. And that was that was the question. And that's where we got started. So then we just started dreaming uh, for about a year and a half of world building. What could this place be mm -hmm. and what could make it stand apart from other critter type of things. We knew one thing that had it standing apart was that apart from Redwall was it wasn't about war. It wasn't about battling. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that kind of made it unique. And another decision that we made that was sort of early on was that there would be no magic in the world just to make it unique and to make it different mm -hmm. and to kind of try to give a little more reality to the fact that like that farmer or whatever character actually has to work hard and they get tired. And at the end of the day, they go home more like real life, more like medieval life right. and less like um, powers of magic that could just manipulate things for you. Mm -hmm. We, we decided to, to not do that and to go with all of the trials that that would incur for our theming of the world, which I think was the right decision to kind of looking back on it. Cause I think that sets Everdell apart from some other things. The title took a long time and we had it when I submitted Everdell, I think it was called um, Everland or something like that, something very generic. And, but we wanted it, we wanted it, the name to be the name of the place that we were creating, the name mm -hmm. of the world. And it just took forever for, it seems obvious now that Everdell is the right name, right. but we had like Everwood and we just tossed around numerous things. And it, it went on for months trying to figure out what do we call this thing? Because we knew if it was the name of the place, it needed to be good and right. stick. And uh, we had no clue if it would go big. We had, we were not even going to do an expansion that wasn't in the works or the mind yet, but finally Everdell is the title that we landed on. And I think it was Dan May that said, well, what about Everdell after, you know, a hundred different other things. And I had said, we had said no to so many things. I didn't even think Everdell was good anymore. Like nothing was good anymore <laughs> yeah. at this point. And, but then it's like, well, maybe, maybe it could. And we'd let it grow on us. And then my wife actually, um, she went online and she looked for a font and found this font that we use for Everdell. We manipulated it a little bit, you know, Right. And then we wrote it out, Everdell, with that font. And we went, you know, I think that's it. That just kind of has this feeling and this sound. It's a lightness to it, but not like a silly cartooniness. And I mean, I'm thinking too much about it. But this is where we were at the yeah. time, mm -hmm. diagnosing the title, uh, never knowing that it would matter so much later for uh, 
hundreds of thousands of of these things around the world. So I'm glad that it worked out that the title did. <laughs> That's fantastic. So then, of course, it got like the amazing artwork from Andrew Bosley, which we'll we'll speak on more. And uh, the tale of the green or yeah, the green egg tales from the green acorn. We'll talk about that later. But um, whether it's base game or anything, do you have a favorite card? in general or maybe like a favorite combo in in the game um i love the farm for the nostalgic factor okay that it was that first card and what's so wild is that it didn't change it still costs the same it's not you know clay anymore it's resin uh and it doesn't give you food it gives you a berry but it's still the exact same thing and so there's nostalgic there i love the artwork on that too and I don't know. Just every time a farm comes up, it feels like probably a good idea. Just grab a farm and throw it down. Uh, and so, so I like the farm. I like. I mean, I like a lot of the uh, the weird cards that kind of do weird things that take a while for you to learn how to use them. Like the cemetery and the dungeon and these type of things are. They're kind of weird, and the first time you look at them, you you can't figure out what would I do with this thing. So, so those are enjoyable. Um, but the ranger is probably. The favorite because every time i want to play that ranger it's like another worker and uh he's my favorite piece of artwork so definitely him yeah ranger dungeon my number one my number number my number one <laughs> my number two like yeah. i will i will if situations come up and i'm in spring moving into summer and i have resources and have cards and all my workers are out and I can build a bunch of things and the Rangers in the metal, I will move to summer just to pick up the Rangers. So I have them in my hand. Right. So yeah. like, be, and that's just the amazing thing about the game. How like, um, you know, you just want to get lots of production cards. Um, well, kind of typically you can, whatever. There's so many different ways. Right. But just the nuances of when to move into season and when to, you know, play specific cards, I love the, I don't play it often, but it's always fun playing that cemetery because you got like, oh man, I'm wasting a worker for the rest of the game. But if you can ever, you know, play that bard, throw that ever tree in there, next turn, no one's gone. Play your, play your worker into the cemetery and fall, flip over the ever tree. It's just like these, these like exciting moments where you're, you're discarding cards and you're like, I hope nobody discards <laughs> right. cards until my turn. And then you can have these huge plays, play, huge turns that are just so satisfying. And so I love the Ranger. I love the dungeon because I love, you know, using the bard, throwing them under, building something else, or, you know, yeah. using common creditors that you've, like, the bard's toad, you've already gotten, you've used it for his full max potential throw them under there and just there's there's so much it just gets me so excited i just um, po postal it pigeon gets yeah, thrown the in postal there pigeon. Whole, all and, the time <laughs> yes and i, I i'm i'm blaming the postal pigeon for not having my everdell game here right now because he's obviously That's lagging in sense. going to the dungeon <laughs> yes he can he can go in the dungeon my wife and i did a top 10 everdell cards in just the base game oh that's and, cool and that's going to have to change um when when new leaf comes because it's adding like 50 percent more cards am i right in that it does yeah new leaf has 50 percent, and new leaf was super fun to design be because people had wanted more cards than deck like from day one and i wanted that too but i i could i had this this roadblock on i don't know if this is going off into something else uh, if you're going to ask this about new leaf but um, do you want me to do you want me to go into that or do you want to do something else? No, go go into that and then uh, and then we'll move into something else. Yeah, go into New Leaf. Okay, okay. Um, but but there was kind of this roadblock with getting new cards in the deck because people would say I want new cards and then other people would say no, don't do it because it's going to dilute the deck and you can't get the combos and all this stuff was was. And I couldn't figure it out either for the longest time, which is part of the reason why you didn't see all these new cards until the end here, the mm -hmm. um, final expansions. I threw a couple new cards into Pearl Brook, and then we tried to figure out a way to have new cards that were outside the deck. That's what you have in Spirecrest. That's the discovery cards. I mean, 
those are essentially like new cards, but they, they function differently. And that was kind of a solution to introduce new card powers. But coming back to the final one, I thought if I'm going to do more cards, this is the time to do it. And for a while, I was thinking I would do a completely new deck that you would just get rid of the deck. You would use the new mm -hmm. Leaf deck. It would just be a totally new thing. And that would have been kind of cool, but also kind of a bummer. And it may have been repetitive because there's some kind of anchors within Everdell of cards that would need to be represented again, like mm -hmm. a farm and other things like that. And then I don't even remember how it happened, but at some point, this idea for how New Leaf and its Occupy tokens works just just found it in some sort of playtesting stuff we did where, as you know, and people that see New Leaf know that New Leaf cards, you have these little golden Occupy tokens, but you only have three of them. Mm -hmm. And then on a New Leaf card, instead of having a specific thing that is connected to, it might say any green or any blue. And so when we started doing that, we realized this opened up to making it feel like New Leaf cards comboed with base game cards like that was the plan from the beginning obviously it wasn't but then that allowed me then to build a whole bunch of cards so instead of just putting a couple in there so i didn't dilute it i could build a ton and it is 50 percent more cards there's like 20 or more uniques maybe it's 30 i don't even remember but it was fun because i having known everdell for so many years having seen people talk about it the combos that they did things that they found that i hadn't found yet Mm -hmm. I was able to just kind of expand on the what ifs for all these cards. And it was an absolute blast to design that and then to play it with so many new card options. And uh, I think that people are really going to like it because it does feel like Everdell 1.5, at least to me anyways, with all of the new powers and stuff that you can mm -hmm. find. And you know what? Let's leave it at that and let's come back and talk about some of those new powers and, you know, more of Mistwood more of new leaf and and then even let's backtrack a little bit about you know spire chris and belfair and uh pearlbrook and then let's chat if you're cool with that um what the future um holds for you in game design that sound good that sounds sweet. awesome man sweet so uh, this is the end of part one part two will be coming shortly and you know what if you want to know more about Cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Find us on Facebook, Cloudy with the Chance Meeples. Remember, community built on conversation just like games are built on ideas. Remember, grab your umbrella. The forecast is cloudy with the Chance of Meeples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember to grab your umbrella because the forecast is cloudy with the Chance of Meeples.